This video is on process states. If you remember in the second lecture, we did touch upon this topic a little bit and then I promise that I'll cover it in more details later. So we are talking here about the different states that a process may go through during its lifetime. That is during the time it is being executed in the machine or in the computer. What we looked at previously was a very simple state tra transition diagram where there are only two states. One state is called ready and the other state is called running. What it means is a new process comes in in the ready state uh, by due to the action of the operating system the user requests a new process for example if you are clicking on the icon of the internet explorer browser you are requesting the operating system to create that process namely internet explorer so the operating system allocates resources for the process like memory resources and also other requirements there is a program in the operating system called the loader which does certain things and the process becomes ready it is now here in this state now at any particular time there are many processes in the system either operating system processes or user processes and they are usually kept in a queue you can imagine a queue as something like this where there are different compartments and there is a head of the queue from where processes are dispatched to the CPU and a tail of the queue where processes enters the queue. So this is the tail and this is the head. Now the problem is if the operating system allows a process to execute until it completes execution uh, the process may take up the entire CPU for a very long time because the operating system doesn't know how long a process will run. And that will be bad because uh, the user response time will be very poor. For example, if you are running the video player in your computer and the CPU is taken up by the video player completely, then of course everything else will stall in the machine and perhaps you want to browse the internet at the same time when you are watching a video it could be possible i can't do that but you can do it perhaps so what the operating system does actually it allocates a small amount of time for each process this time is called the time quantum how small it is depends on the decisions that are taken during the system design, operating system design. Usually we can think of it as, let us say, tens of milliseconds, let us say 50 milliseconds or so. Even though it looks very small for us, but for a computer it's a long time and it can do substantial amount of work during that 50 milliseconds period. And once that time expires, the process is again uh, stopped and brought back to the ready state brought back to the ready state in other words we are stalling the process for the time being and bringing the process back to the ready state so that the CPU is free now and other processes can run in the CPU what really happens is the process which was running enters the queue at the tail end and the front of the queue there is another process that will be now make the, making the transition from the ready state to the running state. Now this pen gives me some trouble from time to time, I hope you don't mind. So another process will go from the ready state to the uh, running state. So this continues until of course the queue is empty um, most of the cases the queue never becomes empty because new processes are always coming at the end of the queue 
and old processes are continuing to run. They are making transitions from ready to running, running to ready. And also at the end of it, they may go from the running state to the uh, end state, let us say. So there is, a, there is an end state or completion state. When a process completes execution, it just goes out of the system. Now, this is a very simplistic diagram. So this is the diagram we are uh, talking about until now. Ready and running. However, things happen to processes during the time they have been given the time quantum for running. Uh, one particular thing that happens is input output request because as we know a program is not really very useful until it makes some input or output request. Your video player reads the file from your hard disk or from the internet from the network socket and that is an input request. So the video player is making continuous requests for reading the file which it is displaying and the operating system is satisfying that request. <clears throat> now one problem is input output requests are usually very slow that is when a process makes an input output request it will not be satisfied for several milliseconds or it varies depending on what kind of device it is and there is no point in keeping that process running in the CPU when it is practically doing nothing and just taking up the CPU time. So usually what the operating system does is it, whenever the, there is an input output request, it takes the process and puts it in a blocked state. So this is the blocked state when there is, let us say, an input output request. What is the purpose of the blocked state? The blocked state is used for keeping a process waiting for its input or output to be satisfied and in the meantime another process can be given the CPU so that the overall throughput of the system is improved. In other words, the CPU can now execute more processes within a given amount of time. What happens to a process that is in the block state? Well, the process eventually its input or output request is satisfied and it becomes ready again. So it goes from the blocked state to the ready state uh, whenever its input output request is satisfied. I'm drawing here the new process uh, which was there in the previous diagram. So now you can see there is a three state diagram ready running blocked and blocked is for in satisfying input output requests. However, there is another enhancement that is done in most operating systems which is um, about the processes that are in the blocked state. So this was the diagram for us and of course there is the arrow from the running to ready. So this was the ready, this was the running and this was the blocked. Now what is the problem with the processes in the blocked state? Remember all these processes that we are talking about until now are in the main memory of the system. That is they are taking up space in the main memory. Now it could happen that there are too many requests to the operating system for running many different processes. And as we know, the main memory of the system is a resource that is not very big, even though it is, it looks big to us, like four gigabytes or so. But if there are a stream of requests that need to be satisfied, then the main memory may not be sufficient. So what the operating system does is, it takes the processes that are already blocked to another, another state which is called the suspend state. Now whenever a process is taken from the block to the suspend state, it means that the process is evicted 
from the main memory and written to the disk. The suspend state is in the disk of the system. So a process that was waiting for its input output sitting in the main memory is now removed and written to the disk. And where it is written is an important, uh, it has an important, it has a name and it's very important to know the name. It is called the swap space for that operating system. And a swap space is nothing but a segment of the disk that has been uh, kept aside particularly for this purpose that is to swap block processes from the main memory to the swap space. Now I'll simplify the diagram a bit. What really happens is eventually the process that has been suspended and swapped to the disk will get its input output request satisfied and uh, if that happens then it goes from the suspend state to the ready state again. That is its input output is now done and it has all that it requires for running so it is ready. So in other words the process will be brought back from the swap space to the main memory again. It will go to the ready state it will enter, remember that queue we had, it will enter that queue at the tail end and eventually it will progress and eventually it will be executed on the CPU. So this is the process diagram that really represents what is going on in the system at any particular time. And you can now relate better that what is really happening in terms of process execution. So I'll stop here and perhaps I'll go to some other topic uh, in the near